Hi guys, Ms. Francis here to continue our discussion regarding Mendelian genetics. The following topics are things that either Mendel didn't do or didn't know about, but it still falls under the category of Mendelian genetics. So two things we're going to discuss today that Mendel had no idea of is polygenic inheritance and epigenetics. So what is polygenic inheritance? Polygenic inheritance is literally in the word. Poly meaning many, genic meaning genes. So it's the additive effects of two or more genes on a single phenotypic characteristic or trait. For example, skin color. Skin color is controlled by three genes. Let's call them A, B, and C where for each gene, so for A, B, and C, there are two alleles, there are two versions. And those alleles demonstrate incomplete dominance or blending. So let's say that gene A codes for melatonin and gene B codes for amount of melatonin and gene C codes for the color of melatonin. It's the different blending of those three genes that creates skin color. Another classic example is eye color. Eye color is actually controlled by seven genes. Now, when this happens, when you have polygenic inheritance, the phenotypic expression follows a bell curved pattern where there aren't that many with very fair skin and there aren't that many with very dark skin. The majority of that organism that expresses that um, polygenic trait falls somewhere in the middle. So what about the environment though? How does that play a role on the expression of your genes? Well, your environment does have a role in how your genes are expressed. Um, for example, so for example, continuing with the um, skin color trait, people near or closer to the equator tend to have darker skin. And that is so that although they will absorb that heat, they will actually reflect harmful UV radiation. As you move further away from the equator, person's skin generally gets lighter so that they will absorb more UV radiation in order to get the essential vitamin, vitamin D that comes from our absorbance of UV, UV radiation. Um, there's something else called Thompson's nose rule, where Thompson, Arthur Thompson, he's an anthropologist, hypothesized that nose shape is dependent on climate. Since your nose is responsible for heating and humidifying the air, he hypothesized that in warmer climates, you're going to have a shorter and thicker nose, whereas in the colder climates, you tend to have a thinner and longer nose. Um, and his rule, his hypothesis was actually tested at Penn State and more evidence was gathered that yes, in fact, Thompson's nose rule does hold water. Um, take a look at this Himalayan rabbit. So the Himalayan rabbit is white with the exception of its ears and its nose and its paws. So its extremities are black. What might be the reason? Well, Himalaya mountains where the Himalayan rabbit lives are cold. The dark color enables the extremities of the rabbit to absorb more light. So scientists did an experiment where they put an ice pack on the back of the Himalayan rabbit. Well, they shaved that part, then put the ice pack on. And the hair that grew was black. However, when they shaved that area again and didn't apply the ice pack, that fur grew back white. Also, when scientists looked at the offspring of the Himalayan rabbits, they did not have um, dark extremities. So scientists wondered what is going on? There must be some sort of gene that's either turned on or turned off based on something. And they did not know what this something was. So what they did was started this human genome project. And within the human genome project, what scientists attempted to do was map all of 
humans genes our our genome which is our entire set of genes and in 2003 the project was finally completed um so now scientists are looking at well how are those genes controlled and now they started looking at epigenetics epigenetics literally means outside genes. So what they're looking at is the study of changes in gene activity that don't involve alterations in the genetic code, but still gets passed down to at least one successive generation where um, a mark is present that tells your genes whether or not to switch on or to switch off for that phenotype to be expressed or to be not expressed. Um, think back to a ghost in your genes where it is factors like diet, stress, prenatal nutrition that can make an imprint on genes that gets passed from one generation to the next. Um, this is the animation that we went through in class. So when you have time, go ahead and check that out. But basically what that animation says is that there are chemical tags that alter the genome. And those tags or groups are called the methyl group and the acetyl group. And what these groups do is they alter the genome. For example, methyl groups cause the genome to be tightly wound up. If the genome is tightly wound up, DNA cannot be read, the protein cannot be produced, and the gene is gonna be turned off. On the other hand, acetyl groups or acetyl tags cause the genome to be loosely wound. And now the DNA can be read, the protein involved is produced, and now the gene can be turned on. In other words, the trait is expressed. Next time, we're going to discuss pedigree charts.